Today we'll be reading once again from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And that reads, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And now I'd like to turn to Matthew 1.23. There reads, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. Why a baby? God in all of his infinite wisdom whose plan was to come and save mankind from their sin and guilt, who was prophesied to come to this earth, why did he pick such a time, a place, and a means and a way as to come as a baby? Certainly there could have been, in our own eyes, many different means and ways he could have came and a great entourage, a great procession, in all the splendor and majesty of a warrior, as God himself coming to this earth for everyone to see, to come to save mankind from their sins. And certainly the hour of that day is, is exactly what people were looking for. In many respects for they didn't recognize Jesus coming as a servant as a servant in many respects but in this case he comes in the silence of the night for the most part unknown to the world except for the shepherds who were told by the angels in the quietness and the stillness of that night God enters this earth for the first time in the purity and in the innocence the vulnerability of a baby why? Why would he come in such a way? In meekness and humility. For is not a young child, a baby, the picture of humility, the picture of innocence? And what was God saying to the world coming to us that way? For certainly mankind has lost his way when it comes to humility. For mankind is now in search of life and new life. Has come and we find for self-preservation because of fear of what's tomorrow going to bring. And self-preservation, the pride of life, in the ways of this world. The world has lost that sense of humility. And did not God say, when I came to this earth, he said, I am meek and lowly of heart. And isn't it such that we can see how the world misses him, even this day. As we see humility in our midst, many times humility is rejected. We see that very evident in those that are least of us, that are physically or mentally challenged. We walk right past it. 
And so did the world of that day miss the entrance. And God certainly was speaking to us in a very clear and loud way in his, because his ways are so much beyond our ways. Amen. And he was speaking to us loud and clear initially for us to come back to that humility. And isn't it so when Christ enters into our hearts for the first time, doesn't he not come in secret? The world does not know it when we invite him into our hearts. And does he not come in the silence of that moment? For again, he's speaking to us in a manner of spirit and not in flesh. Mankind has followed the ways of flesh, the pride of life. And Jesus comes to us and says, no, that's not where life is. Because that's what the devil wanted to do. He wanted to be the one. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be the glorified one. And the world today is fed that doctrine of being the glorified one. And Christ comes to us today and says, humility, innocence, purity is how I come to you in your hearts. For the most important part of you is your spirit. Your spirit will live forever. And he came to us to save us eternally. But he did not stop there because as he grew, we see him giving us the way. He gave us the way through his birth and he gives us the way of life through his life to find abundant life. For isn't it humility that brings us to the place of submitting our lives to God's way and abandoning the pride of life of doing things our own way as the world has indoctrinated us through fear. Fear is how the enemy rules his kingdom. And it's love <coughs> that proceeds from God. It's his love that rules his kingdom. And isn't it love that spawns the humility in our lives and the trust to trust in him to bring us back to trusting and glorifying him and lifting him on the thrones of our hearts to follow his ways to pull us back from the ways of the world and enter us into following his ways which requires submission That he is king of our hearts. That he is the king of king. And Lord and Lord. Lord of lords in our life. <coughs> he draws us to that submission. Because did he not submit himself to the father when he came? He came as a baby. Put himself in total care of Mary and Joseph. Human beings. He took on flesh. And through his life. He said, my will is to do the will of the Father. So he starts his entrance into this world with a message to come back to the Father, to the Father's ways, and submit ourselves to his ways in that humility to find life. If we find ourselves in this world spinning in circles and we're not living in that peace that passes understanding or that joy or the love of God that enriches us 
which he's come to give us, the splendor of his presence that fills our heart when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. In that submission and humility, the majesty that fills our heart, the wonderment that fills our heart, the truly our hearts are shed abroad in his love fills our hearts. And that light which the world needs to see proceeds from you and I to a dying world. Because did he not take residence within our hearts when we accept him in that manger, in the silence and the quietness of that moment? Yet it's like an explosion takes place. The eyes of our understanding are opened. The wonderment of his love fills us and his light comes upon us and, and beams out from our lives to a dying world who are looking for him. And was that not the job of the shepherds that were announced, who came to the crib for the first time, to worship him, to proclaim him? God has saved us from the error of our ways, and he's shown us the way to life. It's simple. How poetic it was for him to come in a silent of night. And did he not come to bring us that inner silence within our hearts where he resides? To shut off the noise of the world as he lays on the throne of our hearts in his innocence, because he was pure, and in his humility. And as we grow in him, as we follow his ways, we find that peace that he promised us. We find that joy that he promised us. We find provision in our lives as he promised us as he shows us his way Amen. and brings us into life, not just eternal life, but abundant life. So Lord, we pray today. We pray for the grace to receive you within our hearts and our spirit, Jesus. That we would walk in the ways of the spirit as you called us, for you are spirit that we would allow your grace to help us crucify our sinful nature, our flesh, that we may grow in your spirit and new life. And Lord, proceed to draw close to you in this life that we live. Truly, Lord, we ask you for that grace, Lord, in our minds and our hearts to to find that humility, to find that submission to you. But we ask all these things, Father. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 <coughs>